In part one of the history of the homemade trading card game or HTCG community, we saw the first ever homemade TCG video by Peter Jank in 2011 with his game Tactic Legends. It wasn't until 2013 though when we saw this wave of card game creators kick off with the likes of Kiwi KJ and Adventure Realms, Wanted Striker with Card Wars and Yellow Duck with Faction Wars TCG. And 2014 brought about the TCG news channel from Peter Jank yet again, which really solidified these channels as a community. We saw the Game Crafter first being utilised in 2015, which meant that homemade card games could now be professionally made and sold across the world. But this split the community slightly, and members of the original HTCG community began to leave. So we begin part two of this history at a slight crossroads. The old guard becoming quieter, the new generation of homemade TCGs began to shine. These post-2015 TCGs are the biggest in the community's history. Wrath of Cause, Scribbles with Rachel and Dimension Battles are still mostly going strong today and have thousands of subscribers. A few games which began life at this stage I feel deserve a special mention, Soaps with Sketchbook Chronicles. His infectious energy. We got the hooplas for the price of one hoopla. We're throwing in four hooplas. Hoopla! A new unique art made him a superstar game maker. And he's still doing his creative thing today with fashion and illustration work on his channel, but unfortunately he no longer works on TCGs. Brad Draws with Eternal Light TCG was an amazing game with a great style. Brad now works on comics and animation projects. Savage Beasts, the card game, started in 2017 and is still going. Likewise with Dimension Wars, who just hit 4k subs. But the game that stood out to me in 2016 though, was Scribbles with Rachel, the queen of HTCGs. Welcome back to another video. Rachel had an illustration style that stood out above every other game at the time. And as soon as you see a face in this style drawn, you know it was heroic. She's an incredibly talented artist, but a simple illustration style just draws you in as a kid, making you feel like you can replicate it and make your own amazing TCG. In my opinion, that's why Scribbles with Rachel has been solidified as an all-time great in the community, now with over 10,000 subscribers. With new games taking over the scene and my own channel growing in popularity, the community needed something once again to push it to another level. A game crafter or TCG news magnitude type of shape up. And in 2017, new tools and technology were there to help us. And suddenly, your TCG was no longer confined to YouTube and creators wouldn't even see it coming. Reddit, one of the more bizarre corners of the internet, but in 2017 someone made a Reddit page for Chaos Galaxy. I had no idea this was happening at the time, but after being notified about it in a YouTube comment, I checked it out and found threads of card discussions, game rules, memes and video feedback, and I realised the homemade trading card game scene go beyond YouTube. The Chaos Galaxy Reddit inspired a guy called Quasar to make the Chaos Galaxy TCG Discord as well. To mine and Quasar's knowledge, this is the first HTCG dedicated Discord page. Discord changed everything about how you make a card game. You can discuss rules on there, the design process, show off artworks before you really release them with the world, and this is in a place far less official than YouTube. Think about it, if you're making a game at home on your own and then showing it on YouTube, you have nowhere to discuss this game before showing it to the world. If you then make a 10 minute YouTube video explaining your game, and then realize something doesn't work and you have to change the rules a week later, that video is still up on YouTube, confusing your fans, taking up your time and creating inconsistencies within the game. Unless you remove it, which results in lost views and a bigger waste of time. If you can post ideas on a forum, like Reddit or Discord, get the opinion of a few people, then figure out a well-made game based on that feedback, your TCG is gonna be so much stronger for it. 
and there are a bunch of homemade TCG Discord servers out there now, which I'd really recommend joining if you're looking for feedback on your game. And it's also a great way to see new ideas and be inspired by other games. And since early 2018, I'd say besides YouTube, Discord has become the biggest tool for homemade TCG creators and is now commonplace to create a Discord server along with a YouTube channel for your game. With the use of Discord, talking about games was one thing, but the next step was to play them. Collecting cards was all well and good, but imagine having a battle using your TCG with community members. A TCG creator in the UK was never going to be able to play their game with a supporter in the US or Australia, and then soon after Discord began seeing use, Untap was discovered. Pretty small platform full of bugs and not the friendliest user interface, but Untap was a tabletop simulator for card games. People upload images which are put onto playing card faces in a big database. You can then build a deck of those cards on the database and enter a game room with an opponent. The deck will be in the room and you can perform all sorts of actions with it. Drawing cards from a deck, playing them, flipping them, shuffling them, removing them, anything you could think of doing with a trading card. Essentially, you could play any game in the world, as long as you have the images to put it on Untap. Partnered with the introduction of Discord in the community, people could contact each other, challenge other players to matches, go on Untap and play those matches. Chaos Galaxy was the first game to be put on Untap, I think, although I had nothing to do with it. Using blurry, low resolution screenshots of cards from Chaos Galaxy videos, covered up by my thumb most of the time. A handful of players set up by Quasar, Bunsen Burn, a couple of others, and the TCG genius PDF TCG. If a game was on Untap, PDF would figure out how to break it. Once he got his hands on your game, he'd push it to the limit, utilising the strongest combos he could find, abuse the cards that the creator didn't even think were good, and make you question why you ever got into making TCGs in the first place. He's done this to multiple games, and I've seen it done first hand to Wrath of course. <laughs> As a small community began to form for competitive Chaos Galaxy games, more players joined the Discord server and started using Untap. Shulk Time, Supernova and Kiro were some of the most active members during this early stage, and I wasn't even aware it existed. As time went on, the community reached places no one could ever imagine. My channel reached 10,000 YouTube subscribers, a number that still sounds crazy to me now, followed by Scribbles with Rachel and then Flynn, although Flynn began to focus on comic writing and street art, which he still uploads today, and he's really cool, definitely check him out. And if you put enough heart, soul, and time into making your videos, it wasn't rare to get a thousand subs for your TCG. In 2018, Chaos Galaxy had its first competitive tournament via Untap, after the release of two sets and two starter decks, and it was one of the most exciting things I'd ever seen. People were using combos in my game I didn't know existed, and the game had gone so far beyond my bedroom and even the YouTube channel into the world of online gaming. For the first time, a homemade TCG had a competitive scene, which is just unreal to think about. And other games began to see people playing from all over the world. However, it made things a lot harder for creators. Rather than just making cards that look cool and could be shown on YouTube for people to admire, mainly younger viewers, your gameplay had to be fun and engaging for older players too. And this is a split that I still really struggle with getting right today. And although having a competitive scene for my game is one of the most exciting things about my TCG, I do worry that I've lost some younger viewers down the line who don't care for competitive play and just love making and looking at cards, which is what a lot of those early members of the community, like Kiwi KJ and ICCS Sunlord, originally set up the community to do. But it's a nice problem to have people following your game for multiple reasons. And it's all just more of the exciting challenges faced by a homemade TCG creator. In 2019, the community had a bit of a lull. The star players like Wrath of Cores and Illumicent Souls were still uploading. But a lot of card games seemed to pop up on YouTube that were really promising for a couple of weeks or months and then disappear again. After being inactive for a few years, Kiwi KJ 
made a really moving retrospective video on the community. Seriously, check it out. And that he said he wasn't coming back and making any more games. Peter Jank was nowhere to be seen and big players like Scribbles with Rachel slowed down and Soaps announced he was quitting. I'm not certain on the causes for this lull in the community. Perhaps homemade trading card games just weren't something people wanted to do anymore. Gaming had become increasingly popular and people could have moved over to watching Twitch streams, the YouTube algorithms could have changed and reduced exposure to the community. I'm sure there are a few reasons. But then, as 2019 came to a close, something happened that would affect the entire world, not just the TCG community. A SARS-like virus which has infected hundreds in China has now reached the United States. It might be two weeks' time, it might be four months' time, it might be 12 months' time. The coronavirus pandemic started in China, spread to Europe and had reached the UK by the end of January. Coronavirus had devastated so many lives, people's jobs and their home life. And all of a sudden, people weren't at work or at school and were instead locked in their houses looking for hobbies to pass the time. The view count on a lot of how to make a TCG tutorial videos went up. My sub count had a slight noticeable increase and with people being forced to stay in their homes, taking up hobbies, some of the all time best HTCGs have been born. Doodle Ninja has been consistently uploading since the beginning of lockdown. Oh my gosh, if you want to talk about someone committed to their games, you have to talk about Doodles Ninja. The guy has been uploading more than once a week since 2018. I don't know how he does it, and making more than one TCG at a time, which I just couldn't do. Astronomica TCG had some of the best video presentation ever in the community, and the most professional looking cards I've seen in a while. Runiverse TCG started up and looked like it was breaking down the barriers between homemade and professional TCGs, Afro Chibi Champs was taking the script of your usual TCG video and throwing it out the window with his game and his dance moves, and new games were popping up every week. If TCG News set up his channel in 2020, he wouldn't be able to fit the week's TCG uploads in a video under an hour long, bearing in mind his 2015 videos were five minutes long. The community seemed to be going in a fantastic direction during lockdown, with games still active from five years ago leading the way, partnered by exciting new games from the past year, as tough as it was, COVID got me really excited for what the future held for this small corner of YouTube. Game tutorial videos were really pushing the boundaries too. Illumicent Souls has some of the most cutting edge card making processes I've ever seen. And on the Chaos Galaxy Discord server, we were regularly holding tournaments for 64 people with real prizes and an entire competitive scene thanks to Quasar and Shulk Time. New games were going up on Untap all the time. Some UK creators, including me, Afro Chibi Champs, Wrath of Cause, and new to the scene Shard TCG, were in the works of planning the first ever UK based TCG creator meetup. And a couple of weeks before writing this script, and what inspired me to make this video was an unexpected notification in my subscriptions box. The Master had returned. So that leaves us in 2020. And if you could go back to Peter Jank in 2011 and tell him what his first video showcasing Tactic Legends would have started, I bet he wouldn't have believed you. Channels with 10,000 plus subs, online tournaments, creator collabs, real life meetups. It's been an unbelievable journey. And going back to part one of this video, I was amazed to see so many of the old pioneers of the HTCG community pop up and say hi. Kiwi, Flynn, Peter Jank, ICCS Sunlord, even the official Gamecrafter YouTube channel themselves got involved. What's amazing is that they all said they were still working on creative projects and they constantly reminisce about the days when they made their cards in their bedrooms and that magic of the community is still alive. It honestly made me quite emotional. I understand that part two of this video has quite a different feel to part one when the community was just starting out as it's now gone beyond platforms like YouTube and I think that's only natural. Things change and that's what will keep the community evolving and keep it exciting. So that brings us up to date, 2016 to 2020. 2021 was a great year too and I think I want to keep this series going doing some kind of yearly review of what's happened in the community from the previous year. It's really cool to look back and give credit on what everyone's achieved in the past year and having discussed this idea with a few people 
I think doing an HTCG award ceremony every year as well would be really cool. Awards like best new game, most dedicated uploader, best video quality, artwork award, obviously all voted for by members of the community and then potentially hosting like a streamed award ceremony or something. Uh, so let me know if you'd like to see that. I think it would really drive the community forward, but let me know if you don't think it would work because I can see it having some like negative consequences too. But anyway, that was part two of the history of the homemade trading card game community 2016 to 2020. Every channel mentioned in this video will be in the description. Please, please, please check them out and support the community. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Check out the Chaos Galaxy Discord and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.